Well, one thing about the world champion is that it's always very easy to pick him out because right at the very back of the field is where he has to start. And another thing about Barry Lee's car is that it's absolutely immaculate. And in fact, today, it's a brand new car. It's not been raced as yet. And of course, I think that must be giving uh, Barry Lee some problems. He must be uh, really worrying how the car is going to go. But uh, Barry's the sort of guy who really gets stuck in and you can rely on a fantastic performance from him, whatever the car, whatever the conditions but uh, we mustn't discount uh, at least two here of the others. Number 19, Mick Collard, Duffy Collard, the pig farmer, very, very popular driver. We've seen him on television lots of times before, and uh, Duffy's a real trier, there's no doubt about it. He'll be in there scrapping as long as that car keeps going. And another man who uh, really is uh, one of the top men of this sport, 306 George Polly. Now there you can see the circuit. The control car coming round the turn at the top, and you can see how far back Barry Lee and those other star men are. Well, virtually half a lap as the green flag goes down, and we start. And Barry Lee already beginning to uh, look for a few gaps and start to move up. Usually pays to hang back a little bit at the beginning in case there's any early pile-ups. It gives you a little bit more time to uh, avoid them and to find a way around if everyone stacks up in front of you. But uh, there's the lead car. Car number 287, uh, out in the front. 109 is second, then 28, then 566. 69 and 307. One of the first star men to show, Joe Tandy in number 129, beginning to move through. Problems for a couple of them there, blue top 112 and uh, 158, Dave Chapman, having to rejoin and, uh, of course, now lost a lot of ground. There's Barry, feeling his way round at the back. He's only uh, passed a few of the slower cars and a couple of the other star men. A little bit of congestion on that turn. Barry finds a way through on the outside. 184, struggling through on the inside. Chris Gortry, former stock car man who uh, converted, so to speak, to hot loads and has done very well. That little bunch of star men. George Polly on the back on the outside of that little group. And that's the sort of thing that's liable to happen if you keep your right foot on uh, a little bit too far. Here's Lawrence Baylor and Baker and uh, George Polly battling it out. George Polly finding the outside line and going through. Starting Marshall indicating to some of the slower drivers there to uh, move over. The blue flag means you're balking, get over and let the other men through. There's Barry Lee, slowly but surely, picking his way through some of the uh, men at the back, but he's got plenty of time. Immaculately turned out to 152 car of uh, Dave Hitchin. Beautiful paint job. One of the leading star drivers. Got a lot to do at the moment. There's the leaders. Still the star men, there's George Polly just going through. There's number 19, Mick Collard, right behind him. That little 414 uh, red mini. Here comes Barry Lee coming off the uh, pit turn, and he's in fact still got three quarters of a lap to make up. There they are, 28 and 128, Pete Winston on the inside of him now. Immaculate Barry Lee car, moving up a little more, trying to get past the slow men one by one. It's not a day for uh, being a little rash, you've got to pick off these other cars uh, slowly and work your way up. You can't start uh, going start stay rearing mad. So we've now got uh, 184, there's 306 George Polly moving up a little further, he's just gone past 128 Pete Winston as well. So perhaps in fact uh, George Polly is going to go out with a bang. In fact, getting himself in a little bit of bother there, just caught against the side of that other car. Finished up on the speedway track, but he straightens it out. 306 George Polly ahead of 128, and in fact now into second place. So it's 184, Chris Gortry in the lead. And in fact, uh, 184 and 306 are right behind Barry Lee, who now, of course, is virtually one whole lap behind. And there's no way really that Barry can get back into this. Now the question is, can former stock car Formula Man 184, Chris Gortry, hold off what's going to be a, undoubtedly a very strong challenge 
from George Polly and Barry Lee. Barry Lee moves out wide and waves George Polly through on the inside. George realizes quite obviously that uh, uh, this is his big chance, and Barry Lee has got no way of getting into this race at all. And he sportingly moves out of the way and lets George Polly through. Well, that new car really, uh, he gambled a bit. Barry Lee gambled on getting that new car ready and uh, relied on it going well, and I'm afraid that it's not worked out that way. Not much to choose between them, but George has got to get a bit of a move on. The starting marshal there giving the signals to these two drivers to let them know, and Barry Lee now, just to add insult to injury, out of the race completely. I know that uh, George would dearly love to win this one. On the other hand, I suppose, in the back of his mind, if he's giving up, he must be selling the car. Perhaps he doesn't want to bend it before he sells it. But knowing George, his attitude always has been to try to win. I'm sure that's uh, very much uh, in the back of his mind. He's trying to catch that car in front, and the chances now are really uh, getting less and less if he can't find something quickly. One more lap to go, inside the final lap now. And it looks as if Chris Gaudry is going to take this trophy. Final turn coming up. And really, he can afford to coast home. George can't catch him. A fine win for 184, Chris Gaudry. 386, 306, uh, George Polly just goes through there in second place. A beautiful drift around the turn. And the third place man was 128, Pete Winston. Of the non-contact formula, it's the hot rods that have been around the longest and they're the biggest spectator favourites. And here's Barry Lee putting his escort through its paces. Again, hot rods are specially built, engines up to 1,700 cc's, and a good car can cost £3,000. No bumpers, because, of course, you're not meant to nudge your opponents. I began many years ago in speedway racing and then went on to driving autocrossing, and then I got a works drive with Ford in rally crossing and hot rod racing. Uh, sorry, not hot rod racing, in rally crossing. I left Ford, had six months off, and then decided to um, take up oval racing to get my hand back in for the rally crossing and I, I haven't left since. But I've, for someone who is keen to start today, is that the best way in with a Oh, game? definitely. It's the only sport in, in the world now where we pay a novice driver to come and participate in motor racing and enjoy. Now, what do you reckon is the attraction of small oval motor racing? I think the attraction is when you're at places like Brands Hatch and Silverstone, people will see the, the cars leave the start line and they're all in a bunch and it's very, very exciting to see them all tear into the first bend, 30 cars in a bunch. And then after the, a couple of laps have gone, they all seem to string out into a possession racing. But here we can give you that, that scene every lap, lap after lap. You've got 30 cars on 30 laps. And the thing is, the fastest people like myself, who is world champion, I have to give everybody a lap start, so I've got to go through the field in 30 laps. That means I've got to overtake one car per lap. It's very exciting. It's, it's exciting and it's good because you're matching your skills against the track conditions and other people because all the cars are supposed to be equal and they are virtually equal. Is it dangerous? Uh, it's dangerous crossing the road or skateboarding. Everything's dangerous, isn't it? So, in all the time you've been racing, Barry, can you remember your hairiest moment? In hot rodding, my hairiest moment was actually where we're doing the interview on this particular corner. Uh, my throttle jammed wide open just as we we're going to hit the brakes to come into the turn. The throttle jammed wide open and I went through the safety fence and onto the dog track. It cut the car completely in half, but luckily, we you know, we've got safety precautions in my particular vehicles and I got out unhurt. Barry Lee is currently the British and world champion hot rod racer. Now, with your hot rod cars, I mean, it looks fairly hairy when you're going around. How many cars would you get through in a season? Is it the same car? The same been... car. This, this actually is, is my new car, but um, I usually ra race a car for anything up to about 18 months. And how do you actually practice for hot rod racing? You, you obviously can't come and use Wimbledon Stadium. No, this is, this is a problem when you're starting hot rod racing. This is why we've introduced the white grade drivers. That means their roof grading is, the, the co colour of their roof is white and that means they're a novice grade driver and they go out in their own races but because of the um, noise abatement societies and things like this, you can't actually go and practice anywhere apart from Aldershot Stadium which is very, very limited. But you know, you, you novice drivers, if they join the sport, do go in their own races and as soon as they've got enough points to qualify as 
having some sort of experience, they then go into the yellow grade, then the blue grade, then the red grade, and then with a bit of luck, they don't take my gold grade off from me. <laughs> But Barry, is there one last word of advice to someone who's keen, having seen this programme, to have a go from yeah. the world champion? Yes, if they consider they're better than I am, don't do it. <laughs>